All right, guys, look what showed up. The SPB 089er, the blue Seiko Alpinist limited edition. You can see there, this is number 959er of 1959er. Limited edition, laser engraved on the back, unlike the Sarb 017, which is more of a stamped type case back. I'm indifferent. They both wear great. This is nice and smooth. There's no hot spots or anything like that. I think I'm, I'm fine with laser engraving. Um, I don't have a problem with that. Definitely a better strap on this one. It's um, I think it'll break in really nice. And it definitely smells like leather. It's not like some, I don't know what the other one was made out of. But um, I don't really want to compare it a ton to the green one. I, I can tell you my personal opinion of now owning both. I don't currently have the Sarb 017, but I think the green with gold is, I don't know, I, I feel like that's the, the Seiko Alpinist that I kind of grew up with. I know there was a bunch of models before, but that green and gold, I think that is more iconic than this one. Um, I don't want to say this one's not cool because it is really cool. Um, if I can get some good lighting here for you, you can see that blue, although it's dark and there's a lot of black in there, you can see it has some radiant to it. So it's a really good color. And of course, you still have those very nicely done applied indices, you know, the uh, even numbers around there with the other hash marks. You have the framed, well, not framed, but printed framed date window there done in um, the date window done in black so it matches really good and then you have the color matched uh, outer chapter well inner rotating bezel but you know the chapter on the inside there that's a smooth operation there and it's color matched to so the dial as best they could you know it's not going to be radiant but it's going to be um, blue nonetheless so everything else is pretty much classic as far as um, it's just a different colorway so in yeah it's limited edition but you know you have the signed crown the sizes are exactly the same so any sarb 017 video you go watch that has all the details you're going to have the same things here there's nothing <clears throat> new and exciting here other than it's blue and it's limited edition so <clears throat> I can't help but think that uh, there's probably going to be a ton of people that are maybe possibly, I don't know, you, it probably goes both ways. There's probably people that are underwhelmed with it, and there's probably people that are overwhelmed with it. This is exactly what they wanted. You know, there's people that are probably going to wish that it had more of the matte type dial that the original pictures when released look like it had. And, you know, there's probably people that are relieved that it's this dial. I, I got to be honest with you, I'm kind of indifferent. Um, I don't feel any sort of attachment to this. I don't feel like it was um, a... The whole experience of the way it was released and the way I purchased it and the delay, even though I paid extra for shipping, the delay before I even received it, um, you know, the, the paperwork, the packaging, it's, to me, it, it just do, it doesn't feel very special. I don't know. Limited? Sure. Special? No. It doesn't feel too special to me. You have a, a warranty card here that wasn't even filled out. There's nothing there. There's no special packaging or literature or anything. I mean, you have a, a numbered case back, which I guess that will always stay with the watch. But there's nothing really extra, you know. And yes, we paid extra. You know, I don't know what the suggested retail price on the SARB 017 is. I'm not really even sure, but I know what they're currently trending. I think they're selling it around four, just over $400. Um, I think most people are probably going to be happier with that watch versus this one. So unless you're hardcore Seiko Alpinist collector fan and maybe you hate the green dial and you want the blue dial, then absolutely this watch is for you. Um... I hate to sound negative about it because it, it is a really cool watch and it's cool when Seiko does new um, releases and everything. I just, I don't know. I'm, I don't feel any connection to this watch at all. So, um, but it's a cool watch none the, nonetheless. And I know that typically this isn't how I do videos. I usually don't tell you guys this part of it. But I will tell you this. Um, 
getting this watch on the way, I was, uh, and maybe I built it up too much too. So sometimes we do that as watch buyers and sellers. If you build it up, your expect expectations are maybe a little bit higher, and then maybe a level of disappointment occurs. Or if your expectations are really low, and then you get the watch and you're just like, this is much better than I anticipated. Then it seems like I connect better with those. But I did reach out to Larry over at uh, Uncle Seiko because I know it's a, um, it's, you know, a never ending search for a lot of people to find a good bracelet for the Seiko Alpinist. And I really don't think there's enough options. Sure, there's options. And I think most people will find something to fulfill the bracelet want or need for them. You know, obviously you're going to put it on leather, you're going to put it on natos, you're going to do all these other straps, but I think uh, a really nice bracelet would, would really hit the spot. So, I don't know what you guys think, but I was trying to talk Larry over at Uncle Seiko into trying to make a beads of rice like this, but in the 20 mil with a, um, even if it's folded like this, I really don't care, because honestly they fit better. Um a beads of rice bracelet for this I think would be killer with the polish in the middle and the brush just like this the polish in the brush because there is some I think it would pair up really nice with this because you do have the polished and then you have the brushed on top of the lugs I think that would pair up really nice with this if he could make that happen I don't know if you get can you guys visualize that I know it's hard to visualize it because I'm not putting it on wrist but you know he has his other bracelet too like this style if he did this one in a uh, polished finish maybe or two-tone even this one would be really cool. So it would be awesome if he did some uh, uh, bracelet options for that. And then, I don't know if you guys know this, but like the Zen 104, um, I found out. I forget who told me that. But the Zen 104 bracelet fits the Alpinus perfectly. It, um, that's what I was told, and that's what I was shown in pictures. Don't hold me to that. Also, the uh, Genoa Ocean Rover, that bracelet supposedly fits this perfectly. So... On the flip side, yes, you might go hunting for one of those bracelets to put on here. But if Larry over at Uncle Seiko can build these bracelets to fit this, then he has also built bracelets to fit the Genoa and the Zen and whatever else fits in there. So it's kind of cool. Um, I'll give you a wrist shot here real quick. I don't want to get too much flexing on the uh, strap just because I really don't see myself keeping this watch. I'm not sure... Uh, what I'm going to do with it yet, but so there it is on my 7.25 inch wrist. You can see it wears really good. You still have a nice lug to lug. I think it's only like 38 mil, but I think like, what is it, like 47 or something. I, for, I forget the exact dimensions. I'm not even going to measure it. You guys, there's tons of videos on the SARBs and the, it's a, it's the same watch, just different colorway. So um, if the blue with the polished bits um, are your thing, then absolutely try to score one of these. Be patient though. Don't pay the crazy high prices on eBay unless there's like a specific number or something and you're just geeking out about it and you want that specific number, then I guess you got to do what you got to do. But um, I think once the dust settles, hopefully the prices will come down a little bit. Plus, who knows what Seiko is going to do at Basel. Um, if they might do some other colors, who knows? Maybe they'll do a white or a black or something. So that's the one thing, I've been doing this long enough, and I think most of you guys have too, that there's always more watches. There's always more stuff coming out. So don't, don't get caught up. Don't feed the beast of the, um, the scalpers or whatever like that. Everyone's complaining about them, but the only reason they exist is because people are buying them. So, um, and I suspect the people that are complaining about it aren't buying them. So people with more money that uh, they have more disposable income maybe they don't care then that's fine that market is for them so and it's unfortunate i know you guys are saying it's unfortunate that you weren't able to maybe pick up at the 600 hundred dollar price tag the original 1959 but like i said be patient things have a way of working out so thanks for watching sorry if i disappointed anybody on this i'm just trying to keep it real with you guys um it's an awesome watch like i said it is an awesome watch it's just it's not really for me so it's definitely one I knew I wanted to get in to share with you guys and experience myself and see myself um, firsthand but that's about it so thanks guys I'll see you on the next yeah. video real soon I'll give you a loom shot don't expect monster loom. I mean it's Seiko loom it's gonna be good loom but there's just not a ton of it on the dial 
So obviously you have amazing loom. It's just not a ton of it there. So, all right, now I'm really done.